The studies we presented were a combination of our initial phase three trial comparing standard of care radiation with um, reduced dose radiation after induction chemotherapy, and then a continuation phase two trial. So it, the total number of patients that were treated with reduced dose radiation were 32. There were several patients that uh, were part of the study that dropped out for particular reasons. Uh, several patients dropped out because they didn't want to get the high dose and they left early, so we did not include them in the in intent to treat analysis. And several patients had uh, high-risk non-16-HPV types that uh, we decided uh, as we were treating them that it would be better not to include them at the present time given our results. So of these 32 patients that we treated, um, we had an astoundingly good response rate as you expect for induction chemotherapy. But let me step back a minute. Um, we selected our patients based on uh, unresectability and uh, advanced disease. So we know from several other studies, including some of the ECOG trials, particularly their uh, induction chemotherapy trial, uh, trials from uh, uh, the Mayo Clinic and other groups that happened subsequently but uh, to our trial, uh, but that uh, we were aware of these risk factors. So patients with T4 lesions, um, N2C disease, which is a signal for systemic disease, and radiographic extranodal extension uh, were felt to be high risk for uh, recurrence and local uh, both local regional failure and distant metastases. Uh, we did include some patients who had uh, intermediate advanced disease, but who were not eligible for our surgical trial by virtue of the um, non-resectability of their primary disease. Uh, patients who had non-resectable lymph nodes obviously had either extranodal extension or evidence of it on, on their scans. Uh, so we, we included these very high-risk patients who have a, a risk of local regional failure and also of systemic metastases. Uh, they were treated with a reduced dose of 5-fluorouracil uh, uh, in the induction regimen, which consisted of texture, cisplatin, and continuous infusion 5-FU, the TPF regimen. Uh, because the consequential and significant toxicity in this is both uh, neutropenia and uh, mucositis diarrhea, we reduced the 5-FU dose, which was perhaps the most problematic of the drugs. Uh, we did not give Nulasta, uh, and we gave patients prophylactic antibiotics, which uh, dramatically controlled um, any febrile events during the uh, neutropenic episodes. None of the patients dropped out for toxicity, uh, and we had a couple of hospitalizations for transient fevers, although we did not document any infections in any of these patients. Uh, of these 32 patients, um, they all had an uh, excellent response by CT scan and PET. Occasional patients were not allowed to have PETs due to insurance reasons. Um, and so we, um, we treated uh, all of these patients with 5,600 centigrade of radiation and weekly carboplatin, which is the TPF regimen that, was, uh, uh, that has been approved by the FDA for advanced disease. We had uh, a few local regional failures and one systemic failure in the group. So overall, there was an 84% progression-free survival, which we thought was excellent for this population, an 88% local regional control rate, uh, and an 88% overall survival. We had one or 3% risk of systemic metastases, which is reduced from what you might expect and what you saw, for example, in the ECOG uh, study, uh, as well as the Mayo Clinic uh, trial for their advanced patients with uh, extra uh, nodal extension. What was interesting to us in the study is that we had no failures after uh, 12 months from the start of treatment. So all the patients who had uh, persistent uh, control uh, remained disease-free uh, for uh, the duration of our follow-up, which has a median of five years uh, and varies from 24 months to about, uh, I'd say about seven years now, seven or eight years. I've been seeing patients who are seven years out from the original randomized trial in clinic now. The other thing that was notable is in the randomized trial that we had, we had eight patients who received standard dose radiation 
and they were indistinguishable in terms of uh, control from the low-dose patients. Uh, one patient in seven years developed a second primary, which was documented uh, to be HPV negative and P53 mutated. Uh, and uh, underwent a local resection. It's alive and well now about uh, a year afterwards. You know, high-dose radiation is not without late consequences. And we are seeing, in fact, in our HPV, in our earlier patient population treated with standard-dose radiation and chemotherapy, second primary is developing uh, with some regularity in the radiated field um, that are not HPV positive. So, but to return to this study, I think this study demonstrates quite uh, dramatically, that we can have excellent control with reduced dose radiation. Notably, when we look at the randomized trial, which was also presented as an abstract in ASCO, and look at quality of life, we had significant improvements in quality of life in the first 12 months in the low-dose treatment population. And given the small number, there were only 20 patients in the entire trial, the randomized trial, given those small numbers, the fact that we had significant differences is quite remarkable. And when we looked at the five-year data, which we obtained uh, in, for this abstract, uh, we also demonstrated that several of the quality of life uh, measurements were significantly better still, although, and all of them trended towards a better outcome for this uh, group of patients that uh, received the low dose. So even though it was a small number, there are significant differences in quality of life, which shows the power of the reduction in radiation dose for this population. I would like to editorialize a little bit here and say that I'm very disappointed in the U.S. approach to HPV de-escalation. Uh, it has absolutely attempted to maintain radiation dose and even eliminates this platinum. While it's clear from anybody who treats this disease that radiation dose and field size are the principal determinations of long-term and short-term toxicity in these patients. And any randomized trial that doesn't attempt to address this by reducing radiation dose is not going to be successful. Um, and this is, and, and does not approach the problem. It is incredibly disappointing that after years and years of wasted studies in patients with HPV, that we have not seen a definitive phase three trial that allows us to reduce dose of radiation therapy in at least the early stage patients. And uh, certainly, we should see one in advanced stage patients. So I think it is a, um, a clear message that I would like to send to the radiation community who are really in charge of this process and to the NCI uh, oversight committees that this is really an intolerable situation for our patients who are being overtreated, subjected to unnecessary toxicity and late mortality and morbidity by high-dose radiation.